the advent of World of Warcraft's latest expansion of Dragonflight, it is clear for all to see that a new era of WoW is upon us. The stark contrast between the old and the new has left many to speculate on whether a world revamp could really be upon us. The question remains, what would this look like? This second coming of a cataclysm would change the world that we know forever. Let's start by taking a look at the frozen wastes of Northrend. What would these once familiar lands look like if a cataclysmic event took place and reshaped it once more? Don't forget to like and subscribe and come. Take a seat by the fire. To preface everything, it is best we start with the cataclysmic event that would be the most likely catalyst for the world revamp. During the events of Dragonflight, the old gods have reawoken in Azeroth once more. The titan machinery keeping them at bay was destroyed and depowered. It is the breaking and cracking of this once great machinery that shifted the land masses. As our allies scramble to make sense of this new world free from Order's grip, the Dragon Aspects, now restored to full power, have come to aid us. Upon a dragon's back, we scout this alien yet familiar landscape. As the icy wind begins to rush against us, we see the mist-laden peaks of the Howling Fjord in the distance. Long have the Iron Dwarves excavated the ancient structures here. The once sea-beaten cliffs no longer the natural barrier against the waves. As the tidal wave of the Calamity crashed against the soft rock, the lower settlements were all but washed away. The Brykul clans here suffered the most, their already dwindling numbers not helping. The Horde and Alliance fortresses held strong for a time, surviving mostly intact. But nothing could have prepared them for what happened next, as the cave systems that snaked through the underground of the zone became flooded, and with the sudden return of an ancient master, a veritable army of faceless came swarming from the deep. The now mostly diplomatic forces left behind were overwhelmed immediately, and those who survived were turned. Small green chunks of ore have begun to push through the softened soil to the surface. The once ceaseless howling of the wind now has a foulness to it. It carries whispers that speak to you of terrible portent. No more sane beings cross the threshold to the fjord now. For any who venture too close never return. This is the staging ground for a grand war. One planned by the armies of the Black Empire for countless eons. Ships from both the Alliance and Horde have wrestled control of the coast. For now, in a vain attempt to hold the line and contain it. We cannot linger here, and we swiftly fly to the grisly hills and find it... Peaceful. Too peaceful. Something doesn't seem right. The once bustling logging businesses, now desolate. The imposing Vrykul holdings, abandoned to the elements. Even the great felled tree once teeming with Furbolg society is cold and empty. The land here has long been cursed. It will be easy to assume the scourge rampaging across Northrend decimated any signs of life. Or perhaps the cursed wargons, still not brought into balance, took advantage and picked the land clean of life. If only it were so simple. But there's no signs of a struggle whatsoever. This zone is a mystery. One giant investigation on what really happened here. Was it some failure of titan machinery? A malfunction of the technology beneath the land? Or perhaps it was the connection to the dream. The now corrupted portal at the heart of Grizzlemoor. But for now there's no time to linger on this place. And it will have to be a problem for another time. We're aiming for Dragonblight. But now is the perfect chance for a flyover Gundrak. 
hard to pass up the opportunity. A tinge of sadness in the air as we realise that the Grand Tribe of the Drakari is no more. The last vestige lost to a power-hungry warlord. The last time we saw it, plague and death had claimed this land. But any sign of this can no longer be seen. This land is nothing more than a series of craters where the titan machinery underneath has burst forth. Huge pistons and rotaries jut in random directions from technology of impossible purpose. No sign of the mighty carved edifices of the lower can be seen, which is like erasing the last memory of their existence. What is worthy of note is how there are now pathways leading down below the cold surface. The troll city we have already ventured into is only the beginning. There is an older city still, long buried and forgotten it seems. This ancient Derubian city spans for miles underground. The defences, now lost, allows for a type of exploration hitherto unseen. While many of the creatures here wander aimlessly, they are not without danger. What secrets could this ancient city reveal as to those early days? We come then to perch on the summit of Wormrest Temple. Even this cataclysm could not topple the mighty symbol of Dragon Unity. While the last vestiges of the elven ruins to the south have long been swallowed by the sea, the same cannot be said for the dread that swarms in the north. Still they move like an unending tide of rot and decay. There is no safe passage into what remains of Crystal Song now. The renewed strength of dragons will prove mighty enough to hold this land, allowing them to reclaim their dragon shrines and continue their great purpose. But something big is happening in Ice Crown. We will have to investigate soon enough. First, however, we pass into the Borean Tundra. We got word from Kalagos the aspect of the Blue Flight, at how they have managed to restore the Caldera. As we fly towards the boundary, we look for any signs of the old entrance to the other Nerubian Kingdom. But it looks completely collapsed now. One final disaster to bury this ancient entrance. But on the horizon we see it. The last titan-based structure still powered on Azeroth. A shining, swirling purple beacon rising above the ice. It appears the ley lines are completely destabilized. It will take much time and a lot of help to restore them. The elements are being driven mad from the surges of magic crackling outward from the spire. Steam surges. Lava flows and storms rage across this now chaotic landscape. The skies are not safe for long-term flight here. We must make for more hospitable skies of the Shalazar Basin. The thick jungle air will be a welcome change from the biting cold. Except there's no jungle left. The basin has filled and flooded. The once perfect crystalline waters now dull and lifeless as the infusion process ground to a halt. Jutting from this now great lake are the familiar pillars, each one beneath the surface emitting an eerie light, one that rhythmically pulses the light from each type of crystal. Without the titan machinery to take control of the elemental power that surges through the land here, it has created a veritable maelstrom of power the species that survived have been infused. The Gorlocks especially have had the most changes. The once protective oracles now crazed with the raw power of the elements. As deadly as this underwater zone has become, the sounds in the distance are the most foreboding. What was at first a faint murmur is now a cacophonous chattering. As we scale the mountains towards the dread citadel of Ice Crown, the sound reaches its fever pitch. The sound of the scourge, acting wild and maddened, is all that can be heard now. They pour from every rock and crevice, 
it is hard to imagine any force able to stop them. Every instinct in your body is telling you to run. Amongst them are the stitched giants that have continued to be made. With no force strong enough to oppose them, it does make you wonder why whoever has managed to take control has not sent them forth yet. Then you realise it, the terrible truth. The dark god of death that once ruled these lands has returned. yogg -Saron, now no longer shackled, can reach out his unfathomable mind. The helm of domination once filled the minds of the dead, leaving no room for anything else. But now free from it, the vacant minds have found a new occupier. We must once again attempt to cut the head of the snake. We learned this lesson the hard way, that trying to match a force like this is folly. So we push to the final bastion of the Storm Peaks. The once beautiful Titan-made buildings are all but ruined. This area seemed the worst of the devastation so far. The crashing storms that frequent this zone are still persistent and make flying a dangerous if not impossible task. But deep within the ruined complex of Ulduar, what remains of the Keepers are waging the final front against the fleshy abomination and his minions. The army of the dead that still possess enough will have joined the fray. Led by the blood court of the Sand Lane, they will not give up their freedom so readily. And an allegiance with the living, while not ideal, could prove useful should they prove victorious. Remember, this is just how we imagine the revamp to happen in one of the continents. There is too much to cover in one single video, but it is something we could very well see happening. Which zone would you be looking forward to the most if a revamp did happen? How about you let us know in the comments, or even come chat to us on the Discord. Oh, and don't forget to come back. Anytime.